Hey friends, you cannot afford how not to know how to pipe your leather goods to make the most premium bags possible. And today, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Leather piping is used by a huge number of luxury leather brands across the globe. One of the most common for types of finishing your bags to make them look absolutely spectacular when you do it well. So let's dive right in and I'll show you how to make the perfect leather piping. First of all, I have split down what's going to be the piping itself. So this is actually two centimeters wide, 20, uh, 20 mil wide. Always over cut the length thing. It's flat split down to between 0.9 and one mil. Cut out the pattern for both, for the circle that we're going to be using as our demonstration piece and the lining leather. Now this is goat skin. It's pink because why not? The piece which would serve as a main body of your bag is a bull calf. It's really nice actually. I'll, I'll leave the tannery name below. For the piping itself, I'm going to be using this cord. I don't think you'll be able to see it on camera like this. No, it won't focus. It is one millimeter thick and I believe it's actually cotton maybe. If I can find the link, I will leave it down below. Otherwise, just feel free to send me an email and I'll see if I can sort you out a bit. Really, really good for this. It doesn't stretch at all and it holds its shape really nicely so you can wrap your piping around it. When skiving the exterior of the bag or whatever you're making, you're gonna flat skive the edge down to 0.8 mil. For the interior of the bag, the pink leather for this case, you're gonna flat skive the edge 10 millimeters in. When you're flat skiving the interior piece, you wanna go down to 0.6 mil. So the exterior is gonna be 0.8, interior is going to be 0.6. The first thing we're going to do is make the actual piping. So we're going to take our piping strip that's been skived down to about one millimeter, one millimeter is perfect, and we're going to glue our cord to it. This is actually the same cord that's used in jewelry making if that helps you find it a bit easier. We're going to glue the cord to the piping strip. When you're gluing the cord into the piping it's helpful to draw a line straight down the middle. So when you lay the, uh, the cord into the middle, you get it really perfectly straight because a soft leather will bend and stretch in different, in different ways. So if you're doing it without drawing that line down the middle, you might end up with the cord going all skew it. When you're making the piping, make sure that you go along and you squeeze the leather together with your fingers and then run the bone folder down it nice and tight to the piping cord itself. When you're gluing the actual pieces together there's no point in putting the glue anywhere apart from just the 10 centimeter area that you've skived. That's the only part that you actually need to put any glue on. Then holding the lining down, you want to bend over the exterior leather, giving it a 90 degree angle at that point. That way it will sit nicely when you flip the bag round. On the round part or any corners, it's easier to put it onto something round. And then you want to put your pliers on, squeezing it together nicely and pulling it up into that 90 degree angle. After you've got all of these things glued together, uh, so that you have the three different elements, you've got the in, uh, you've got the base, you've got the exterior, and then you've got the piping, you wanna use some rough grit, and I'm using 280 grit sandpaper, and you want to sand just the very edge. So I'm sanding about five mil from the edge. You, you can do this with a ruler if you prefer. I like to just hold it between my thumb and my index finger and rub it around. That's how I personally do it, but please do find the best way for you. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put glue around the edge of the circle or the base of the bag that you're making and the piping strip. That's all I'm going to do for the time being and I'll show you why in a second. With the cord facing the middle, not facing the outside, 
we're going to lay that down and it's useful to do this with it picked up in your hands because you want to do, you want to push it down into that 90 degree bend that we put it in when we glued the surfaces together make sure you line up the edge perfectly so we're going to we're going to have a look how far we want that to overlap i want it to overlap about this much which is i don't know about 15 mil of overlap so with that there i'm going to take a bit of the excess off i'm going to lay that flat but i'm not going to push it down and then i'm going to measure how far in i want it so it comes up to i'm just going to straighten that edge to make it a little bit easier for myself lay it down and then put the one that you haven't unpeeled into that uh, gap you're going to use just a normal pen and there we go all right so the next major step we're going to do from where the line is we're actually going to flat skive it for 15 mil so it's going to be a bit tricky you can unpeel a little bit more if you like doesn't matter if your flat skive is a little bit short we can adjust that and that is to zero it's feather thin and what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, we're going to skive just the very very end of this just the very end skived to the very end and you'll see why that's really important in just a second so we'll let that dry don't worry about a little bit of glue squeeze out we can deal with that afterwards we want to take off a little bit of that cord And then we want to put some glue in here so we can lay it all down, all right? Like that. And we're going to glue this surface here where we've skived it off. A little bit of glue on there. Now that's set, we're going to put this part into this part. We're going to put the skive bit into the open bit. Hold the open bit open so that you don't prematurely stick anything to it. And get it as far in there as you can. We're going to slowly, and again, don't worry about squeeze out. It just means that I very slightly over glued it. And you're going to put that down. You're going to make sure that it lines up at the edge and lines up on that feather edge. You won't see that once you take the glue off afterwards. So don't worry about that. So instead of having a big bulky strap that you put over it, you don't have that. And make sure that that is properly stuck down all the way around. And give it just a little bit of a twist as you go. Going around the cord, you want to get that, you want to get your creasing iron a little bit tipped over so that you get a nice deep crease into that. I'd personally use the creasing iron set to about a four. That's how I would do it because then you don't risk burning the leather as we're going to prick mark it. Now I'm going to use a number 3.85 but I'm going to be skipping one hole. Not when I prick mark it obviously but when I sew it I'm going to, I'm going to skip one hole going around. So it's right up against it and start with one stitch going over the join so that you know that that is secure. Now it goes all the way through. 
And because this is round, this is gonna take me a million years to do. Because this is round, I can only do one at a time. It's ready to be glued for the next step. When you're gluing the part that you've actually put the piping on, make sure you don't put any glue at all over the cord or the piping itself. Anything that does go over, wipe off. Before it's helpful to turn the round bit, so your, the base of your bag or whatever, it's helpful to turn that upside down so that you can line up the edge properly. Squeeze it as you go, but don't put tension. As in, you don't want to pull it round, you just want to place it round and then squeeze it tight into the edge so it doesn't, so that the outside part doesn't get to, uh, wrinkles in it or anything when, when you flip it round. So you just want to place it and then squeeze it into that edge. I'm going to go around it with my pliers to make sure that it's all stuck together. And as you can see by the dish shape, this is why we pull the pliers together, uh, pull the sides up or down when you're making it, because it means that it has a really nice tight lining without having to glue the lining down. So when you're stitching it, you're actually sticking th stitching through the back of the hole. If you stretch the leather, you'll actually see the back of the hole you punched. So you, you're only going through a couple of layers. I would strongly recommend that you use a round tool, otherwise you'll be holding it all really weird when you do this. And you're just gonna stitch normally. The only difference is instead of going one by one, you wanna have one miss one, because you want a nice long stitch. You want to put it snug, not to the point where you break your thread, obviously, but it keeps a nice tight bend in um, at the point of the piping. So you want to, you, you do want to have those threads, those stitches quite snug. So we're going to go one over, one over from this where we started, and then we're going to do three back. Because this is poly thread, polyester thread, I can just melt the end. If this was cotton, I'd obviously have to put glue into the hole. Now you've stitched it, you want to take some 280 grit or coarse grit sandpaper and just even out that edge. It doesn't need to be perfect because you're going to paint it, but just even it out nicely. Now it's sanded, take some edge paint and put a generous amount on. You don't want it to be so thick that it drips off the side, but you do want it to be thick enough that in the next step when we heat it, it will fill the, any cracks in. So just go around it, put, put a nice generous coat on the edge, and then take your creasing iron, a flat tip, so a S0.5, go round with it cranked all the way up, it'll glow hot. Flip it, we're gonna push on the edge and the seam whilst we sort of pull through in this motion, all right? And do it quite quickly, but don't do it so fast that you risk damaging anything, obviously. So I'm gonna start at one point, I'm gonna push it around. This will obviously be much harder if you're doing it on a full bag, but take your time and the shape because it will be quite puffy until you, until you ply it and give it some proper shape.
Because obviously, as you can see, the seam, I can't even find it, the seam is there, and I can barely see it, it's practically invisible. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take a hammer and we're going to tap that down. This is all to give it more shape. And there we go. The join here where it's open will look a little bit looser just because there's no tension pulling it in. But that's it. That is your perfectly piped pot or bag or whatever it might be. Beautiful, isn't it? Thanks so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and le let me know down below what are you going to make with piped edges. I can't wait to read it and I'll see you next time.